Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. Mm. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. I don't know what day you guys are going to receive this message and listen to this podcast, but currently it is Friday in current time, current real time. So if you're listening to this on Friday, happy Friday. Whatever day you're listening to this, happy whatever that day is, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, whatever. But uh, welcome back, all my listeners, man. I really appreciate y'all, for real. This is Fit God Podcast, episode seven. Siete in Spanish, nana or shichi in Japanese. Well, welcome back. Today's episode is entitled, Life is Good. Life is Good. Yeah, just let that sink in for a little bit. Feel free to say it, you know what I'm saying, along with me as well. Life is good. So, today, I just want to discuss, you know, some things to help you guys along to uh, inspire you to just have a have a good day. You know, one day at a time. One day at a time, you can have a good day. And good days amount to good weeks, months, years, and ultimately a good life but it is a it is a practice and it does take time to change your perspective because um we are traditionally it's just human nature to be very reactive to the things that occur to us in our daily lives you know and perception is key to all of that so good and bad are subjective respectively. So you can have two people who have the same exact day, same occurrences, same everything, right? Same location, whatever, same time. And you can ask those same two people, how was your day, right? And then one would say, man, today was terrible. I went to work, it started raining, then I got caught in traffic. I was late to work, spilled my coffee on my shirt, you know, the day ensues, my, my boss wrote me up, you know, for something that had nothing <laughs> that had nothing to do with me. I came home, my baby was crying, my wife was not really feeling too well. Just, you know, whatever the day, whatever the day might have brought, this is just random, this is just random um, occurrences, if you will, just me giving an example. And then you ask one person who has the mindset of, you know, being reactive and can say, you know, just justifiably that the day wasn't really that good. It was bad, you know, subjectively. And then you ask another person who just has <clears throat> a different outlook on life, who might have just kind of found the humor in everything that was going on that day and not took it so personally and said, you know what, all of these things that happened today, I'm just happy to be alive, man. Life is good. <laughs> it blows your mind just thinking about how perspective can change, you know, how a person views the things that they go through in life. So today's lesson is L-I-G. It's an acronym. So y'all should be on LIG, L-I-G. Life is good. Learn to let it go and live in gratitude. Now, funny enough, I actually just came up with those last two uh, acronyms as I was, you know, taking a a nice bath and kind of meditating, um, just thinking about this podcast, actually, because I didn't actually have it in the cards today to just give it to just do another podcast. But as things come to me, I kind of try to channel it and then get it out before it dissipates. And sometimes the best time to do something is is right then. So here it is. Even though I gave you guys episode six, what, yesterday or the day before? The days are kind of just running in together for me. Um, I've been working so much, but life is good, you know? Life is good. So whenever things occur, I'm not saying don't process whatever happens to you in your day. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not telling you to be a robot. That's not the way. To numb yourself is not the way. So let's just establish that first and foremost. Secondly, um, allow yourself to process whatever happens to you that day. You know, you're a human being. You're going to react to whatever occurs. 
but you can actually reevaluate after said thing happens and let it go after you have processed these emotions, these feelings that you have, of course, and then live in gratitude. You know what I'm saying? Things could always be worse. I don't really like to use that saying too much because it kind of negates how you feel about said things that occur. So I'm not really going to... Mm, depends on how you use that. You know, it's like a scalpel. You can... A person can destroy a life with a scalpel, right? But in the right hands, a doctor, a professional, someone can save a life with a scalpel. So it just depends on how you use that particular thing. That's a good analogy. I like that one. So um, living in gratitude... I think that's a very powerful thing because to me, from my experience, gratitude is the quickest way to happiness. So you ever wonder why people who seem to have a lot less materialistic wise seem to be much happier? You kind of remember a time back when, you know, you had less, right? You you just didn't have a lot of, you know, significant things. You might have been financially unsound, like $2.37 waiting on payday five days away, you know what I'm saying? And then you just, your phone went off or whatever, and then you kind of see the people that come to your aid when you're in those dark moments, and it kind of makes you appreciate life. And the fact that the things that really do matter are the things that you cannot buy, you know? The people who come to your aid when you don't have a lot. So, Everything is useful. When you go through those types of times, it kind of makes you reflect, honestly, and put things into perspective. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you guys a funny story, man. A while back, um, I actually had an a, a issue because <clears throat> I had left one of my jobs, a job I had for like seven years, just because it was the universe just told me it was my time to go. I got everything I needed from that job, and I left, and then... Um, I was living with a good friend of mine, you know, uh, the universe blessed me to be able to move in with somebody and into a nice house, good location for like $200 a month. So I was pretty ecstatic about that. So things were going kind of good for me. And then, um, I wasn't, I, I didn't have a job at the time, but I had a little money saved up. So I was, I was able to do what I needed to do. And then I got this job <clears throat> and then I worked for them for like, it was, uh, it, it was basically a scam. So they told me you work for a certain amount of days. I don't know if it's like two weeks or something. And they will pay you based on the amount of packages that you deliver because they, they drop stuff off. You pick it up and then you go mail it out. You know what I'm saying? So I did that for like two weeks. And I was like, man, I'm about to make so much money because they pay you per package, you know, supposedly. And then the two weeks came or whatever. And now I didn't get no paycheck. And then I was like calling the number. And then I found out. I looked it up and then on Google or something. And it was like, yeah, it's a scam. And it was just like people having their testimony about how they got scammed too. And I was like, damn, man. So I went through a rough patch in my life after that happened. And uh, a <laughs> good friend of mine, Jess, I don't know if she's listening right now, but... It was funny because was, I was down bad. Like, I had to move back home, you know what I'm saying? Grown, a man, grown adult, like, sleeping on the couch back at Mom Duke's house. But it put a lot of things into perspective because as far as I felt, like, there were people who actually cared about me and showed me compassion. And it's like, my perspective kind of shifted, you know what I'm saying? Like, I might not have my own space, but I'm surrounded by love and compassion. And then... <laughs> Jess, uh, <laughs> she was picking at me one day. She was like, uh, cause my phone had went off cause I couldn't pay my bill or whatever. And she was like, she was like, you can't call your hoes now. And she was just like picking at me. It's so funny. I laugh at it. I laughed at it then, but <laughs> I laugh at it now even more. And then she like paid my phone bill for me, you know, shout out to Jess. Cause she, uh, during that time, she really held it down. You know what I'm saying? She's a great friend of mine. We still friends to this day. Shout out to Jess if you're listening. Your head's still big as hell. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But anyway, I just say that to say this, man. It's um, it's all about how you perceive things, man. And nothing is wasted. You got to grasp the lesson with everything that goes on in your life, man. Even if it's like the most, like the worst situation that you can fathom and you go through it and there's something that you can take out of it. It's a reason why you go through these things, man. Nothing happens by, you know, just coincidence or it's it's something that can be got from everything that happens, man, no matter what it is. So life is good. Learn to process these things. Let it go and live in gratitude. And that will serve you for all of your days. I promise you. I'm not like 80. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm not the wisest sage, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't live in the forest and, like, meditate every day, you know, with the trees and birds don't come hang out on my shoulders. As cool as that would be, you know what I'm saying? But um, I know a little bit, man. I've experienced stuff, and I tend to just try to catch on to the things that life is showing me, my creator is showing me, my guides are showing me, because the universe conspires with us. And no matter what you're going through, the universe is working things out in a way that you can you can't even fathom. I can't even fathom. Like things are working out for me right now that I don't even know until it until it comes into you know into sight for me. I'll be like, dang, somebody might reach out or something or something might happen, and then it's like, okay. So um, affirmations always affirm affirm what you want to attract. Like I said in the previous podcast, you are a God, so you have to take control of your thoughts and project the type of things that you want to attract. The universe is basically your genie, man. You just have to talk to it, you know, and fear and um, negative emotions, self, negative self-talk, all of these things. The universe does not speak in negatives. It only speaks in affirmations, affirming. So if you say not, I am not, I don't want, you don't speak in that way because the universe does not interpret it in that way. So if you say, I do not want to get sick, I don't want to get sick. I know I said this in one of my previous podcasts, but you going, that is an affirmation. Just take out the, the don't. So you're basically saying, I want to get sick. And then you are adding emotions, energy and motion into these words that you are speaking into the universe and the universe is going to say, I bet I got you. And the next thing you know, it's going to deliver the said thing that you do not want, but it does not work that way. So affirm everything that you want to bring to you. Learn to speak in affirmations only because as I said, the universe, you got to speak the, the, the language of the universe and this is how you get and attract the things that you desire. So to take a, a note from one of my favorite movies, and I'm pretty sure everybody has listened, well, watch this particular movie, like The Lion King. So, interesting story. There's a lot of gems in a lot of movies. That's why I like to watch kids' movies and stuff like that, because I'm just a big kid at heart, honestly. And there's always something beautiful to learn in those types of movies. But in, in The Lion King, basically, you know, Simba's a young young prince, whatever, Mufasa shows him the ropes, you know, everything that the light touches is our kingdom, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and he goes on his own path. He goes into the dark area where the hyenas are, Scar, et cetera. You know, you know, you know how the story goes, but essentially he goes from becoming, from being like, you know, the next king to his father dying and then him basically leaving his village, you know, and then basically being a nomad in a sense, right? And then through this journey of he meets Timon and Pumbaa, which <laughs> two um very cool characters that basically have nothing. They have nothing basically and they live in the jungle with nothing. Two best friends and they're just they're just the happiest they're just the happiest that they can be with nothing but themselves and in nature. They're eating like grubs and worms and beetles and all of that, insects and stuff. And then Simba is like, gets with them and is like, bro, wow, y'all really living like this, eating bugs? Like, it's disgusting. And then he just, he's hanging out with them, singing Akuna Matata. And the next thing you know, he changes his perspective. And that was part of his journey. He was meant to do that. And then he finally comes back, you know, defeats Scar and takes his his place rightfully as the king. You know what I'm saying? And he had a guy, Rafiki, which everybody, you know... <laughs> funny character because he just seems like he's weird and insane and doesn't know what he's talking about, but he actually does. And he was a great guy to Simba. And then he learns from Timon and Pumbaa that it's all about perspective. And that is a pivotal lesson that I think anybody can get anything from. This is why I, when people wake up in the morning, man, you know, before they go to work, they watch the news, right? And it's so it just gives you so much bad information, bro. Like such and such died, gas prices are going up, et cetera, et cetera. And this causes you to get in a, a, a um, perspective of anxiety. Um, like there's no abundance, you know what I'm saying? Like every man for themselves, I got to do this because there's not enough gas and all of this. It just puts a strain on you. Like as soon as you wake up, bro, like you're going to work at a, to a job that you probably don't like anyway. So just imagine the amount of stress that you're putting on your body and your mind and then the things that you are affirming through fear, 
you know, and attracting those things to you. So habits, man, you wake up man, watch Tom and Jerry or something, man, watch Family Guy or something that's going to make you laugh and have a good time. And then you go to work and you're already in good vibes and emitting positive energy. You know what I'm saying? You ever go to your job and ask people, how are you doing? What type of day are you having? Oh, man, I'm ready to go. Oh, man, it's Monday. Oh, man, you know what I'm saying? It's like it's so much negativity, bro, like to the point you don't even want to ask people how they're doing because they're going to say something like that and it's going to affect you in a negative manner. But again, life is good, you know, live in gratitude, you know, let it go. So when we harbor things, especially bad things, you know what I'm saying, that has an effect on us and then our energy transmutes to other people. And then we just, you know, we, we're our conductors and we give that to other people. So, um, but yeah, uh, I wanted to talk about something too. I've been thinking about today as well, as I was thinking about this podcast, um, shout out to Mrs. Mrs. Matusi. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Um, Lex, Megan. I hope you guys are listening to this. I'm going to forward this to y'all so y'all can let her listen to this part. But um, there was a wedding that I shot for my homeboy Lex in June, right? And uh, <laughs> I'm a photographer, so I don't, I, I never liked, I never liked the idea of shooting weddings, a wedding period. But Lex kept talking to me, man, and that's my boy, and he's done a lot for me. So I was like, all right, bet, because it's you. And then he was going to, he, he paid me a good amount, so. I go to shoot his wedding, and uh, I just meet a lot of good people, good vibes, took great pictures for them, man. Shout out to y'all again on y'all newlywed, you know, thing, doing y'all thing, you know. And um, I spoke to Megan's mom, right, and beautiful person, man. Um, so we're having a good time. Everybody's having a good time, good energies everywhere. And she, they had, she has a son that passed away. His name is Patrick. And, um... Before that, I came to something they had for him in memory of him. And his quote was, I've never had a bad day. And I kind of thought about this ever since June and and prior to that a little bit, but more so since she talked to me. She kind of just gave me, you know, the backstory on how that came about. And um, they basically, she would drop him off at school, right? And then uh, she would ask him to, to like tell him every single day, like name three things that you're thankful for. And then it just something that she instilled in him. And then it became something that he did every day habitually. Right. And then it just came to a point where he came up with a quote, I've never had a bad day. And I wish I could have met Pat, man, but it's, it's interesting how you can leave things here for people that you don't even know, man. Like, this affected me personally, and I'm giving it to you guys. You never, you've never even met him either, though. But it was such a powerful thing, man, to live in gratitude. So be grateful. So if you take every day and just say, just name three things that you're grateful for, right? And then it's so powerful that you can just be, you really just be out here talking like I've, I've never had a bad day. Because if you live in gratitude each and every day, how could you not be at peace? How could you not have a a blissful life, you know, and that's something that I honestly myself have been applying the last couple of days, and I just been noticing a lot of positive things going around, going on around me, for me, for other people, man, who I'm in touch with, and life is just beautiful right now. I don't have, <laughs> I don't have like my dream car. I'm not living in like my dream house. I haven't manifested the things that I wanted to yet, and got to that place that I know I'm gonna get to, but. I love the journey. It's not about the destination because once I get to that point, man, it's going to be like me looking at everything that I've overcame, all the people who I've touched and just shown stuff and got a lot from as well. Like at at the gym I work at, the people who I talk to, man, like I really appreciate y'all. Like y'all continue to inspire me to continue to inspire others. Like, and that's the most powerful thing for me. This is what I really do. I do it for you guys so that you can see that I'm not better than anybody else. I'm merely a reflection of you. I am the same type of person. Like I come from the same divine creator as you do. You know, we're all energy. We're all we're all gods. You know, go back and listen to episode six if you haven't. But I just wanted to share that with y'all, man. Um, Shout out to Mrs. Matusi. Um, You are a beautiful person. And I appreciate you telling me that story and just welcoming welcoming me into your home. Because, like, that 
it, it's it's such a great place to be over there. The energy is always great, and you guys attract nothing but positive people. So, as much as I <laughs> as much as I was against shooting weddings, bro, like yeah, the universe put me right where I was supposed to be at at that particular time. So. Um, shout out to y'all. I will forward this to you, Lex. Hopefully you can get this message to her so she can listen to it because she's impacted me and um, Pat, you've impacted me as well. I hope these words reach you because I know you're not actually gone. You're just in a different form as we all will be, you know, at the end of our, our journeys here and be on to the next phase, whatever that is. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I did in a past life, but, you know, we forget things and we come back. But that's a sidebar. But. That's today's podcast, man. Um, episode seven, siete, nana, shichi, in Japanese. Um, I speak a little bit of something. I try to broaden my horizons with my languages. It just feels different, you know, doing that. So I urge everybody to expand, expand, expand. Learn what you can. Surround yourself with people that you can learn from and also people that you can teach. You know what I mean? Just give and receive. Be compassionate. Live in gratitude. Learn to let it go. And always know that life is good. And um, shout out to everybody who's been interacting with me lately. Um, Shout out to Crunch Fitness, man. You know, people that see me, that know me. People that see me, that don't know me. Um, It's just, it's such a great club, man. And I just, I really love my job. I really love the people that I interact with. And I'm supposed to be where exactly where I'm at, man. You know, what can I say? Life is good. Everybody's listening to this, um, especially the people that know me. I just want y'all to say, hell yeah. Everybody that know me know what's up with that. But even if you don't, man, just say it one time. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Life is good. L-I-G. Let it go. Live in gratitude. That's my time, man. Um, and always remember, no obstacle life may manifest will ever be greater than the strength we hold within. That's my time, y'all. Y'all be blessed, man. Lucky God. Figure out podcast episode seven. Life is good. Peace.